Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News, something new I'm trying here on Beyond the Trailer. Uh, it's going to run every weekday morning in addition to Beyond the Trailer's other programming. Movie Math is coming later today. It was a holiday. That's why it's uh, a late a day. Uh, and it's going to be a short show, maybe around five minutes in length or so, with uh, three topics of discussion, three big stories that are topical. Uh, but the biggest change that I hope that you like is it's going to be more interactive. Uh, a lot of times I get requests on Facebook and Twitter to cover certain things, and with the way the news schedule, the news cycle works, I don't always have time. This hopefully will allow me to address uh, things that you're interested in and want to hear my thoughts on. But also, at the end of the three stories every day, not today obviously because it's the first episode, but I'm going to try and answer one or two questions from the episode yesterday. So if you have a question for me, anything at all, uh, go ahead and write it down below and uh, you, you might get an answer tomorrow. So let's start today's episode. The first thing is, of course, uh, the Cannes Film Festival was dominating the headlines over the weekend as it wrapped up. But I, the thing that caught my eye, the biggest story to me, besides all the theft and everything going on over there, which was just a crazy festival this year, that, but that uh, Bruce Dern came out of nowhere and won Best Actor for Alexander Payne's Nebraska. Uh, this movie has really not been on any radars. Uh, but it is now for the Oscars. It's, um, it's Alexander Payne's film. He did, you know, Sideways, The Descendants, Election back in the day with Reese Witherspoon. And this is a film about a father and son cross-country road trip. And it stars Bruce Dern, Laura Dern's father. And, you know, the Academy just loves it when an actor comes out of nowhere, you know, a really respected actor who's been working for a long time, but never really quite got to be movie star status, they love it when they have kind of a comeback. So this is, this is great for Bruce Dern, it's great for the movie Nebraska, but you know who it's really great for? Will Forte, who plays Bruce uh, Dern's son in the film. So I like to call Nebraska, in reality, the revenge of MacGruber, because whoever thought we'd see uh, Will Forte coming back uh, so strong in an Oscar contender. All right, so that's story number one. Story number two, uh, TMZ got hold of a promotional still for Machete Kills, Robert Rodriguez's upcoming sequel to Machete, and it, it features Charlie Sheen. You know, Robert Rodriguez is really... Some might say, you know, step devolved into this kind of stunt casting, and uh, one of the, you know he had Mel Gibson in I think the last Machete or one of his previous films, and now he has Charlie Sheen. But the, the interesting thing is that Charlie Sheen is being billed as Carlos Estevez. Now, if you're not aware, that's the actual Sheen real life family name. A lot of actors change their name for showbiz, and his father uh, Martin Sheen is his original name is Estevez. That's why Charlie Sheen's brother is Emilio Estevez. So I guess Charlie. Sheen feels he's trashed his actual name, I mean his stage name, so he's going to go with this. But when I see something like this coming from Charlie Sheen and Robert Rodriguez, I feel kind of bad because it's almost as if these two very talented men are locked in a race for who should be taken less seriously, uh, in, my, in my opinion. So I'd be interested to know what you think, if you think it's, it's humorous to go with Carlos Estevez, or, you know, it's like, well, now you're embracing your your Latino heritage once, you know, you've kind of made a mess of things. You know, it's like, uh, it's like a very, pol pol uh, very politician move. All right, so third story. It was a little bit of a slow news weekend uh, because Can took up all the headlines, but I was at Phoenix Comic Con, and one evening I decided to watch a movie in my room, and I watched Jack Reacher. Now, uh, when Jack Reacher came out, I covered it up beyond the trailer. The audience loved it, but I just couldn't get myself to go see it because it seemed like a small film, and, you know, I, I, you know, I think it came out the holiday season, as I recall, and there were just other things that I wanted to see. But those audience members were correct. I really was impressed with Jack Reacher. If you can get past the first 20 minutes, uh, where it's a little slow with his character, where his character is introduced, does a very gripping uh, beginning with the crime. But then, you know, it gets a little slow, but boy, did it pick up afterwards. I would say it reminded me a lot of uh, some great 1970s filmmaking, very uh, French connection, but also shades of Hitchcock, Rosamund Pike, Definitely played the Grace Kelly role to the point where I felt the, that Christopher McQuarrie, the writer-director, that's what his intention was. And, you know, I think that if his role had been played by, like, Jimmy Stewart or Cary Grant back in the day with Hitchcock or in the 70s or, or maybe even the 80s, you know, with Harrison Ford, it reminded me of films like, uh, you know, Presumed Innocent or Witness, one of those great uh, gritty films that should have done really well. And why didn't it? I would say for two reasons. First of all, I think Tom Cruise was really horribly miscast. I mean, he just wasn't, like, he wasn't this surprisingly cool guy. I mean, I think Tom Cruise wears his coolness on his sleeve, which just didn't work here. Uh, and second of all, I think Tom Cruise's star power got in the way of the film. It shouldn't have been called Jack Reacher. It should have had, you know, more of, a, I think, a name that alluded to the mystery. And in, the, in that same vein, I think the publicity campaign shouldn't have focused around, oh, this meet this new hero, Jack Reacher, who's going to have a franchise. Uh, it should have just focused on this cool, interesting mystery about the film that it's trying to unravel. 
and it's just Christopher McQuarrie, you know, he wrote Usual Suspects. He's kind of gotten sucked into Tom Cruise's world. And I guess it's fantastic that Tom Cruise is giving him so much work. He wrote Valkyrie and, and some other things. Uh, you know, so Jack the Jack the Giant Slayer, which maybe I should give it a shot after after this. But um, I think that Tom Cruise's star power seems to be getting in the way of McQuarrie's talent. But it might finally pay off, as rumor is, is that Christopher McQuarrie will be directing Mission Impossible 5, which has been greenlit uh, after Oblivion uh, opened very nicely at the box office. So uh, those, are my th those are the big three stories that I'm covering today. Something for you to think about. Uh, write your thoughts down below about what you think of these uh, stories and if you have any questions for me tomorrow and what you think of morning movie news. It should be in your, in your subscription or come and look for it here on Beyond the Trailer every morning by around 9, 9.30. Earlier if I can get it up. Okay, all right. Have a great day and uh, Movie Math is coming later. Bye.